Hi folks, and welcome to another episode of How I Tank, a series where, mainly through my own mistakes, I share my experience going through World of Tanks and trying, attempting to become a better player, and it's an attempt that's still in the works. I'm still trying to become a better player, but along the way, I've learned from my mistakes, I've shared some of these in the series with you, um, I explain how I play tanks, what I've done to improve as a player, and I talk about battle mechanics. So on previous videos I've talked about battle mechanics, and this one is going to be exactly the same because I'm going to be talking about battle mechanics and today we're going to be talking about signal range which is a battle mechanic that maybe a lot of people don't fully understand or don't quite know how it works um, and you know I don't blame them because of all the battle mechanics possibly signal range is the one that's least important and we'll get onto that in a little while but let's just talk about signal range first the basics uh, signal range and view range are very very closely connected they work almost the same way um, so if we take a look for example here on the Leica tractor uh, and we look under spotting we've got under spotting, we've got signal range and view range. They are both considered part of the spotting mechanic. Now, I've talked all about spotting on a previous video, but we're going to be focusing on signal range first. So, first thing you got to know about signal range is uh, the main factor regarding signal range is your radio, your equipment. And here on the Leica tractor, we actually only have one radio. Um, so, not a very good radio, tier one. It's only got 265 meters of signal range. Uh, sometimes you're going to hear it called radio range as well, but most of the in-game documentation, call it signal range. So uh, you can see here the radio has 265, but yet over here on the stats for the tank we have 271. So they don't quite match. And the reason is just like view range is uh, signal range is based on your crew skills. Not only is it the equipment them itself, the radio you're using, but it's also based on the level of your crew. So uh, as you can see here, I've got a 100% crew, but yet this commander is showing up at 105%. That's because I have vents on the Leica tractor. So you can see that I've got plus 5% to all crew skills up here. So I've got plus 5% to all crew skills. That means my commander is 105%. So when the commander is at 100%, I get 265 meters of signal range with my radio. So if my commander was brand new, let's assume my commander is only 50%, my signal range would actually only be 132.5 meters. So it would be half. 50% commander equals half the view range, half the signal range. And that is why it is so, so important to have 100% crews in pretty much every tank you drive. If you don't have 100% crew, you are severely handicapping yourself. So, um, yeah, because my commander is at 105%, uh, that means I get the full signal range of 265 plus 5 percent which brings me up to 271 meters of signal range uh, so yep yeah, it's very very crew depend or equipment dependent and it's very very crew dependent not only that but um you, you can upgrade radios because it's a piece of equipment you can upgrade radios so uh, for example obviously the tier you are the signal range is going to change if we go to the uh, IS-7 here at tier 10 comparing a tier 1 to a tier 10 we take a look at the radio and there is only one radio available just like the tier 1 because it's a tier 10 but um, just like uh, one radio available whoops no, I don't want to see that at all. Well, actually, maybe I do. Uh, but you can see here that the signal range is 720 meters. So obviously, the higher the tier you are, the better the radios you have, the bigger the signal range. And exactly like tier one, it is very, very crew dependent. If I did not have a 100% commander, if my commander, I don't know why anyone would do this, although I'm sure some people do, but if you've got a 50% commander in a tier 10 tank, then that view or that signal range again would only be 360, 360 meters. So uh, signal range, very, very highly affected by the level your crew is at. So uh, 768 uh, meters of signal range at tier 10 with a fully trained crew and a commander. Um, yep, that's pretty good signal range for a tier 10. Uh, because it's a module, obviously you can upgrade it. Um, I think that's, no, that's a premium tank. Uh, we've got the T-54E1. That has more than one radio. It does have more than one radio. So we've got a uh, new toy for me, by the way. Not too new. You can see I've got a lot of experience. I was 
playing it a lot of times fives and times threes. Haven't aced it yet, but I'm enjoying it. Uh, but what you can see here is uh, two radios, and they are very, very different radios. We've got a stock radio, and you can see that the stock radio weight comes in at 120 kilograms. So the radios actually weigh different amounts. The heavier the radio, the heavier the tank. Therefore, the less maneuverability you're going to have. But it's only going to affect it in a very, very small way. But what you can see is the stock radio here on the T54E1 at tier 9 is only 410 meters of signal range. That's absolutely awful considering it's a tier 9. However, when we upgrade the radio, what we can see now is our signal range is now 745. In fact, it's better. It's even better than the IS-7s at tier 10. So the radio can be upgraded just like anything else to improve your signal range. Uh, another thing that affects the signal range is your cruise because as you can see here the T54E1 four-man crew and no radio operator um, and in fact the Leica tractor is exactly the same. Three-man crew no radio operator. IS-7 uh, does have a radio operator, I believe. No, it doesn't. It has two loaders, not a radio operator. So IS-7 is missing a loader or a radio operator as well. Um, Mutz doesn't have... I don't have very many radio operators showing up here. Uh, oh, the Turan 3. Turan 3 does have a radio operator. Okay, so uh, yes, uh, a lot of tanks don't actually have radio operators. They have uh, a separate uh, radio operator on the commander. Again, we take a look at the uh, commander skills for the Leica tractor, and this is the same for most tanks that don't have a radio operator. You can see that the radio operator, or the commander, is also the gunner, and he's also the radio operator on this particular tank. So you get you get special skills as a radio operator, but uh, most on most tanks that don't have a radio operator, the commander happens to be the radio operator. But when we come to a tank that does have a radio operator, um, they have a very, very particular set of skills. So we've got radio operator, we've got common skills, and we've got four skills for radio operator. So uh, first skill here is a situational awareness, which has absolutely nothing, absolutely nothing to do with signal range. This is view range. It extends your view range. Um, and this is actually more important than the commander skill. Um, sometimes people look at recon. Yes, recon and situational awareness do exactly the same thing. You can see situational awareness on the radio operator extends view range. Uh, recon on the radio or on the commander extends maximum view range. However, situational awareness is actually twice as good as recon. Off the top of my head, I believe that this gives you roughly about 8% further uh, view range situational awareness on the radio operator, whereas recon only gives you, I think in total, about 2%, maybe 2.5%. So um, situational awareness is better than recon. So if your commander also happens to be a radio operator, it train up situational awareness if you want to extend your view range before you train up recon. Situational awareness gives you more view range, more bang for your buck than recon does. Um, recon is much, much worse. But if you've got two separate crew members, a radio operator and a commander, you want to extend your view range, then obviously you want to get both. But uh, there are other skills on the uh, radio operator that uh, that are basically based on signal range uh, as opposed to view range. View range is the most important one. That's why I focused on it, even though that's not the subject of this video. Uh, we also have signal boosting, which extends your signal range. So this basically is a skill. It is not a perk. There's a difference between a skill and a perk. You can see here that the skill comes into effect after the training starts. A perk only comes into effect when it reaches 100%. So signal boosting is a skill. It comes into effect after the training starts. So signal boosting is basically 0.2%. For every 1% you train in signal boosting, it's equal to 0.2% extended signal range. So by the time you get to 100%, it means that signal boosting will give you 120%. So if you've got 100 meters, I'm keeping this very, very simple, if you've got 100 meters signal range, extending signal boosting to 100% at the end gives you 120 meters of signal range. So signal boosting is worth 20% extra signal range to your tank. However, it's not as important as I say, maybe something like situational awareness, but you can boost your signal range with signal boosting. Now you do have another thing here called relaying, which is extend signal range or of allied communications within vehicles radio coverage. Uh, this is sounds almost exactly the same, uh, extend signal range and extend signal range, but this extends signal range of allied communications. So um, if you are within signal range of friendly tanks, what this does is it helps, it's a passive boost 
to friendly tanks. This has absolutely no effect on your signal range. It has no effect on your tank or your crew. Relaying is a passive boost to everyone that happens to be within your signal range. It gives them a 5% improvement. So if you are within signal range of a friendly tank and their radio happens to have 100 meters of signal range, if you have 100% relaying, then their radio has 105 meters of signal range. So you give them 5% extra signal range if you have 100% relaying on your particular tank. It helps your allies, it doesn't help you. But these are the two ones that are mainly related to signal range. Uh, Call for Vengeance is another very, very rarely seen uh, skill on a radio operator, but it enables a radio operator who survived the destruction of your vehicle. Now that's important because quite often your radio operator dies during the destruction, or maybe your tank drowned or something like that, but if if the radio operator was one of the crew members who survived, he basically reports enemy positions within signal range to friendly tanks for an extra two seconds. So if you've got a very, very highly skilled crew, maybe you might put call for vengeance on the tank. But for most people, what they do is they basically try to extend the view range for a radio operator first. Then they basically look at the common skills. So on my, my radio operator, I've got brothers in arms. Uh, I've got repairs. I've got firefighting. But um, mainly, mainly, I shouldn't maybe, I don't know why I've got firefighting. I should have gone for situational awareness. Uh, but mainly you go for situational awareness and common skills before you start looking at boosting your signal range. And as I say, that's just down to the way the game is designed. And we're going to get into that right now. So I'm going to drop into paint to explain how signal range works. And once again, I beg your forgiveness, my incredibly poor paint skills. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with maybe me uh, as a, uh, well, let's make it a square. Okay, so there's my tank right here. And what we're going to do is maybe, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll fill it. We'll fill it. There we go. So uh, that's our tank right here. And around our tank, we've got two circles. Now the first circle, let's make it orange, happens to be our signal range. So let's talk about signal range. Um, do we talk about the Leica tractor with only 200 meters of signal range, 271 meters, whatever it was. Okay, so there's our signal range and we might as well call it signal range. If I could spell, there we go. That's our signal range right here. All right, and then we're gonna have our view range, which is something completely different. So we'll make this a blue circle um, now on the Leica tractor, our signal range actually isn't as good as our view range. So our view range is better than our signal range. So I suppose we could do this. Does that look about right? I don't know. I don't know if that looks right. Uh, so we're going to call that our view range. I can't spell. Oh, English so hard. Okay, so we've got our view range and we've got our signal range. Okay, so our tank is sitting right here in the middle. Now let's assume, let's assume we are spotting an enemy tank. Say we've got an enemy tank. We've got an enemy tank over here and I'm spotting him. Okay, so what is happening now is this enemy tank was is within my view range, but he's not within my signal range. That means if I had a friendly tank, Let's make this friendly tank a unicom. Let's make him a purple tank over here. So let's assume I'm, I'm the further furthest advanced. Maybe I'm sitting in a bush, I'm spotting, and I'm spotting an enemy tank directly in front of me. Let's assume we've got another tank over here, uh, a friendly. Maybe I should have made it green. Uh, and let's give him signal range as well. Okay, let's give him some signal range that is maybe not quite as good as me. Maybe he has a 75% crew as opposed to 100% crew. Um, what you can see here is that even with his signal range, no, nope, that's what I want to do. Um, and we want to give him some view range. Even though it's not a perfect circle, it's close enough. Okay. All right, so what we have here is we've got a friendly tank behind me. I'm spotting an enemy tank. His signal range isn't quite as good as mine. His view range isn't quite as good as mine. And none of these circles are actually overlapping. That means that according to this guy on his minimap, he can't see me and he can't see the enemy tank. He can see absolutely nothing. 
absolutely nothing. His mini-map is completely blank. There are no friendlies showing. There are no enemy tanks showing because he's out of signal range. He is out of view range. But let's extend this or let's change this to maybe... Let's make him a green player this time. Okay, let's assume that he's sitting a lot closer to me. There we go. So he's going to be sitting a lot closer to me. Maybe he's only maybe 50 meters behind me. And now what we're going to do is we're going to get his signal range. We're going to have it overlap mine. Okay, and let's give him some view range as well. Okay, so what we've got now is our view ranges and our signal ranges are overlapping, but only one of these is important, and that happens to be our signal range. So basically what's happening now is I'm spotting an enemy tank. Uh, because our signal ranges are now overlapping, it means that he can see me on the minimap. He can actually see me on the minimap. However, because his view range does not extend to the enemy tank, he can see me on the minimap, he can see an enemy tank on the minimap, but he can't actually see the enemy tank. It's on his minimap, but it's not within his view range. Okay, so it's outside of his render range. He can't see this enemy tank anywhere other than on his minimap. But now he can see the enemy tank because he happens to be within signal range. So signal ranges overlap. So assuming that my signal range happens to be 300 meters, Let's assume that my signal range from my tank extending to the edge of the signal range circle is 300 meters. Yeah, I'm not sure whether or not you can see this. Um, so let's assume my signal range is 300 meters. And now what we're going to do is his signal range, let's call his signal range maybe uh, let's call it 200 meters because it goes out to the edge again. It's to the edge. I'm not going to make it an exact straight line, but from his tank to the edge of the circle, let's call that 200 meters. That means our combined signal range between the two tanks, because they're overlapping, is actually up to 500 meters. So we can drive anywhere up to 500 meters from each other and still be able to see everything the other tank is seeing on our minimap, even if we can't view it ourselves, because it, there, it, the, whatever he's spotting needs to be within my render range, whatever I'm spotting needs to be within his render range. But we can see it on our minimap. Now, if we have a third th tank, and let's say this third tank, again, we're in a convoy stretched out across the map, sitting at the back, maybe camping on the red line. And once again, we're gonna give him signal range. And let's assume his signal range is actually quite good. There we go. Let's give him some view range. Let's assume his view range is actually very, very good. He's got Binox, fully trained crew, equipment, consumables, and his view range is actually quite good. Okay, that's all right. So once again, his signal range is overlapping with the tank in the middle. The tank in the middle signal range is overlapping with me. Once again, because this guy's sitting at the back of the map on the red line, it means that his view range is not good enough to actually see the green tank in front of him. His view range is not good enough to see me or the enemy tank. So Basically, everything here is out of contact on the minimap. However, because his signal range is overlapping this tank in the middle, it means that he can see this tank on the minimap. He can't see me. He can't see the enemy tank. We are not even showing up on the minimap. He can only see what's in his signal range, and he can only see what the tanks within his signal range are seeing for themselves. So information is not relayed through other tanks. It's only, signal range is only uh, applicable when it is you contacting other tanks. It doesn't, no one acts as a go-between. This tank cannot see me on his minimap. He cannot see the enemy tank on its minimap because his signal range is not overlapping mine. Uh, this is a kind of a misconception. A lot of people believe that, you know, signal ranges overlap. Now, because I'm spotting an enemy tank, 
and because my signal range is overlapping this guy in the middle, um, therefore this guy in the middle can see me, can see the enemy tank, even if he can't physically see us, he can see us on the minimap. A lot of people believe that signal range then extends from this guy to this guy, so because I'm communicating with the guy in the middle, he's communicating with the guy at the back, um, it's believed, uh, as I say, some people believe that this player can now see the tank in the middle, he can see me up front, and he can see the enemy tank on the minimap. That, it doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way at all. Um, it's only applicable to the tanks within your single range. So everything I'm spotting and everything I'm seeing is only communicable to this guy in the middle. It's This is the only guy who can see what I'm seeing. This guy at the back is completely blind. According to this guy at the back, the only thing on his minimap is this guy. Now, if this guy in the middle was spotting an enemy tank, Let's make another enemy tank up here. Now what's happening... No, I don't want to do that. Now what's happening is I'm spotting an enemy tank here. He can see this enemy tank on his minimap, but he can't see it to shoot it. He can see me. He is spotting for himself because it's within his view range, this enemy tank. But once again, I can see this guy on the minimap, I can see this guy on the minimap, I can shoot this guy because he's within my view range, I can't shoot this guy because he's not within my view range. So I can see two enemy tanks and I can see one friendly tank on my minimap. This guy is not within signal range of me, so I can't see this guy. I am completely unaware that this guy is sitting on the red line. This guy in the middle, he can see me, he can see a red tank on his minimap, he can see a red tank he's spotting himself, and he can see a friendly sitting on the red line. He knows there's a friendly back here. I don't, because I'm not within signal range. This guy, he can only see the guy in the middle, and he can see what the guy in the middle is seeing, i.e. this enemy tank. He cannot see me, and he cannot see the enemy tank I'm spotting. So signal range is only applicable to the tank you happen to be in contact with. It doesn't bypass, it's not like a link in a chain. Uh, what I spot and is signal back to a friendly tank is then not forwarded back to tanks further behind. It's only the tanks you are in contact with regarding signal range. Um, so, you know, it's, it's going to have a big effect on low tier games where people have poor crews, where people have poor radios, where people don't have, uh, you know, 100% commanders or don't have any radio skills. Um, it's very, very noticeable when you're playing lower tier tanks that signal range can be an issue, especially on a big open map. However, when you get into higher tier maps, then the issue isn't a big deal because on higher tier maps, what we're gonna see is, let's just get rid of all of this. So let's put a mini map in here. And this is why signal range is misunderstood, but it's not an issue. Even if you misunderstand it, it's not an issue. If you don't know how it works, it's not really an issue. It's because of the way the game is built. So we've got a mini map here. And just like most maps in game, this is one kilometer tall and it's one kilometer wide. So basically it's one square kilometer. Now I'm not gonna go in and make all the grid squares in here, but if you imagine the mini map, it's broken into 10 lines across, 10 lines down. So basically it's a one square kilometer with 100 meter squared grids all over it. That's our IS-7 uh, tier 10 tank, and it's playing on a standard World of Tanks map. Because it's a tier 10 game, and because we've got a 750 meter radio, you can see that the radio is covering a huge, huge amount of the map. It's about 750 meters, so it's about one and a half grid squares down from the top. It's about one and a half grid squares from the bottom. And because we're closer to one side of the map, then we can pretty much cover almost, almost to the border. That looks better, yeah. Our signal range is huge. It covers most of the map um, in a tier 10 game. It doesn't cover it all. I mean, for example, if there's an enemy tank up here, you know, it doesn't matter. We're not gonna see him. And of course, because it's tier 10, our signal range is much, much better than our view range. Uh, on tier 10, our view range is only up to 445 meters, just like it is at every tier 
our signal range is actually at 750. So our signal range is almost, almost 40% better than our view range is. So um, at lower tier, view ranges can be higher than signal ranges, but at high tier, view ranges are much, much lower than signal ranges. But our signal range covers most of the map. Our view range doesn't. Our view range only covers 445 meters from our tank. Our render range covers up to 525 meters or 526 meters. But the important thing is our signal range is covering most of the map. Now, okay, so basically, the signal range again on a tier 10 tank is huge. The view range, not quite so good, but this friendly tank here is spotting an enemy tank. Because we're within signal range on a tier 10 map, I can see this guy. The signal range is absolutely huge. Uh, I can see the red tank on my minimap. I can't see him within my gun sights because he's not within render, render range. He's not within view range, he's not within render range. But because it's a tier 10 game, even though I could be on the other side of the map or quite close to the other side of the map. I can still see an enemy tank up in the far corner of the map because signal ranges are just so huge at high tier. The maps are so small, the signal ranges are so high, and that's why signal range kind of isn't that important a skill once you get past the mid tiers. Mid tier to high tier, signal range isn't an issue because it just covers most of the map. Um, and again, you know, we could have another tank down here. Okay, so what you can see here is again, this is a guy who has 700 meters of signal range um, and his signal range is overlapping the tank up here. He's overlapping my signal range here. That means that this guy can see this red enemy tank on his uh, minimap, even though he can't see him in real life, can't see him through his gun sights, he's not within render range, but signal range is just so huge. Just these three tanks are covering most of the minimap. So pretty much any enemy tank that is spotted. Let's assume there's another enemy tank here. Now, this guy can see this enemy tank. This, well, I can see this enemy tank. Uh, this tank down here can see this enemy tank on our mini maps. It's possible that this enemy tank is within render range of this guy, so this guy can shoot him. It's possible he's within render range of me, so this guy can, or I can shoot him. This guy, he's not within render range, so he can't shoot him, but uh, signal range, uh, basically all I'm trying to say is, when you look at the size of these circles and the size of the minimap, this is why signal range isn't that important at high tiers. Now, while the Watt Wiki tries to basically explain signal range quite well, it gives a diagram, it's here in Russian, I'm gonna show you this diagram in English in a moment. Uh, according to Watt Wiki, each vehicle comes equipped with a radio that allows your radio operat operator to communicate with other vehicles on your team. Two friendly vehicles can communicate if they are no further away from each other than the sum of their respective radio ranges, which are also called signal ranges. So for example, a tank with 300 meters of effective radio range and a tank with 500 meters of effective radio range stay in communication for up to a distance of 800 meters. So even if, even if one of the tanks has a terrible radio, let's assume it's a guy who doesn't, he's, he's just bought his first tier eight premium tank. He's got a 50% crew and he doesn't have any equipment or crew skills. So he's got a 300 meter a radio range. He's got a 300 meter signal range. Um, even in a higher tier tank if, or in a higher tier game, if this guy with his tier eight premium with absolutely terrible signal range, got onto a map with uh, someone who has very average signal range, 500 meters in a high tier game, a tier eight, tier nine, tier 10 is quite poor. But between them, they have a, they can stay in communication up to a distance of 800 meters. So this is what I'm basically trying to say. The map is only one square kilometer big. So even two guys with two bad radios in a high tier game can stay in communication, can see what each of the other tanks is seeing up to 800 meters. And that covers most of the map. And that's why signal range really isn't an issue when you get into high tier games. Your effective radio range depends on your vehicle's radio and the effective skill level of those crew members responsible for the radio operator role. As I mentioned, I talked about those skills in the garage. So yes, you can, you can boost your signal are your skills for signal range, but you really, really only want to do that if you're playing a lot of low tier tanks. So let's just assume you've got a low tier tank that has terrible signal range, but you enjoy playing it. It's a tank you maybe spend a lot of time in to boost your WN8, which yeah, <laughs> we'll talk about that another time. Um, you know, but maybe, maybe you want to have a low tier crew, um, then signal range is, can be quite good because a lot of the players on your team are going to have poor signal range. If you have good signal range, 
you can help your team a lot in low tier games but in high tier games even with two tanks with terrible signal range 300 meters and 500 meters they can still stay in contact up to 800 meters um, and that that is why it's so so much less effective in high tier games the only only time you will ever come across problems in high tier games is maybe the radio operator has been killed on both tanks or maybe the commander and radio operator have been killed on both tanks or maybe it's someone playing a tier 8 premium with a 50% crew then it's possible that one tank is going to be on one side of the map the other tank is going to be on the other side of the map and the mini map is going to be completely blank even though both tanks can see enemy tanks it's going to be unknown unknown to the guy on the other side of the map because they're outside of the signal range but it happens so rarely on high tier games that it's as i say signal range is considered not a very important skill but as i say it's still important especially if you play a lot of low tiers to understand it okay so this little bit is important if you're in communication with a friendly vehicle you will share information about the position and health of all enemy vehicles either of you are currently spotting so as long as you're within signal range of one tank whatever you or that other tank are spotting you will see if you've got tanks further out you will be completely blind to them if you're not within signal range you will not relay any information received from other friendly vehicles via communication however uh, and nor will it be relayed to you so in other words you will know the location of any friendly vehicle within your combined radio ranges any vehicles spotted by you friend or foe any vehicles friend or foe spotted by a friendly vehicle as long as it's within your signal range so as i say signal ranges they don't chain together they, they they're not linked so uh, when we look at the example down here there we go um it's a very poor graphic but it is in english so this is the example that's given on the Watt wiki now this can be very very complicated to understand and it's not very very clear but what we've got is greens are friendly tanks and what we've got is you know it looks like a absolute massacre we've got six six friendly tanks here we've got two enemy tanks enemy tanks are a and b and the six friendly tanks are numbered one two three four five six so uh, what we can see here is the radar range now i don't like this graphic because it shows the signal range and it shows the view range but it doesn't show it for all tanks um one tank up here number six seems to have incredibly good uh view range but incredibly bad signal range maybe his commander's dead maybe his radio has been knocked out maybe his, his you know uh radio operator's been knocked out as well but this guy number six up here he's got good view range terrible signal range um, and now this is only an example and this is why it doesn't I, I i don't quite like this example because we take this guy here he's got you know much much better view range but he's got our much he's got much worse view range but he's got much be better signal range uh, this guy here he's got average signal range and he's got good view range this guy here doesn't seem to have any view range at all tank number two doesn't have any view range at all but he does have signal range huge signal range and number one signal range view range are about the same number three no view range but does have signal range so this is why this this outlay is a little bit unclear from the what wiki but um we're going to try and go through it anyway and this example tank one this tank here can see uh b hold on in this example one can see a sorry i'm, I'm having trouble even reading this uh tank one is spotting tank a on the enemy team uh six can see b okay so tank six can see enemy b and these are the only friendly tanks who can see anyone okay so these are the only tanks that are spotting enemy tanks uh, no one else is spotting any enemy uh, enemy tanks there are no enemy tanks on the map number one is spotting a number six is spotting b okay so without radios with no signal range involved on this on this grid the only tank that would know where a is is one the only tank that would know where b is is six no one else is communicating with each, with each other because there are no radio ranges no signal ranges however because there are signal ranges in play one can communicate with two so you can see that the signal ranges here are overlapping between tank one and tank two uh two can communicate with one three and four so one three and four's signal ranges are overlapping with two uh five and six can't communicate with anyone so you can see that the signal range on number six even though he's spotting an enemy tank is terrible uh, so he's not crossing signal range with anyone else 
And number five, his signal range is okay, but he's not within signal range of anyone else. Now this rarely, rarely occurs on World of Tanks because as I say, the minimap is so small, the playing area is so small and radio ranges are so large. But basically in this situation, the net result is Number one knows where A and two is. So number one can see the enemy tank and he can he knows where number two is on his minimap. But the rest of the map is a complete blank. He cannot see anyone else on the minimap because he's not within signal range. As I say, it doesn't daisy chain. Just because two can see tank number four and tank number three doesn't mean tank number one can. The only tank he's in radio contact with is number two. So two can see the enemy tank on his minimap. He could see the friendly tank on his minimap. He could see another friendly tank. He could see another friendly tank, but he can't see the tanks up north and, and he can't shoot. He can't shoot at this tank because it's out of his render range. But net result is number one knows where the enemy is and where tank number two is. Tank number two knows where one, three, and four are. Um, number three knows where two is. So this is, you know, number three down here. The only tank he can see on his minimap is number two. That's it. He can't see any enemy tanks. He can't see any other friendly tanks. The only tank he can see is number two because it's the only tank his radio or signal range is crossing. Uh, tank number four knows where number two is, but that's it. That's it. Because the signal range is not crossing anyone else's signal range, the only tank he knows on, exists on the minimap is number two. Uh, number five is completely blind. Even though it doesn't look it here, his, his, his signal range is not... Because even though his view range is crossing someone else's view range, his signal range isn't. Um, so he's completely blind. According to number five on his minimap, there's not a single friendly tank in existence and there's not a single enemy tank in existence because his signal range isn't crossing anyone else's. Uh, and tank number six, uh, the only thing tank number six can see is the enemy tank. Uh, he's out of signal range with absolutely everyone else. So he cannot communicate that tanks, enemy tanks position to anyone else. Basically, number four is blind. Number five is blind. Number six can't see friendlies. He can He can only see this enemy tank. So this is basically, and it goes into a little bit more detail down here, showing what exactly the tanks are. So just because you're in contact with an enemy or with a friendly tank via signal range, doesn't mean that other tanks that are in contact with that tank can relay their information to you. You only relay information with the tank your signal range crosses. You can cross more than one. As you can see, number two is crossing multiple tanks so he can see everything they can see. But once you're out on the edge, number one can only get information that number two can see, not what other tanks are communicating with him. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping it clears it up a little bit. Um, signal range is really, really only important uh, in lower tier tanks. And you guys have been asking me to do some lower tier stuff. So I thought I'd kill two birds with one stone. Signal range, it's important. But when you get to the higher tiers, the only time signal range is going to affect you is when your commander's been knocked out, when your radio operator's been knocked out, um, and when your radio has been knocked out. Because, and quite frequently, your commander also happens to be the radio operator. So, you know, it can happen. It can happen. Your radio and your commander, who happens to be a radio operator, are knocked out. And all of a sudden, you have no signal range. And you've got some guy on the other side who has exactly the same problem or who just has an incredibly bad crew. Um, and, and in that situation, yeah, yeah, unfortunately, sometimes signal range is going to come into effect in higher tier games. But have you ever wondered sometimes why enemy tanks are dying and you can't see them? Uh, that's it's signal range. It's not view range. It's not render range. It's basically you're out of contact with the tanks that are shooting enemy tanks. So um, I've, I've posted a couple of reviews and a couple of games, re you know, on in the past where enemy tanks were dying. I'm driving around looking for enemy tanks and enemy tanks are dying on the other side of the map. And I have no idea what's happening. Absolutely no idea what's happening. I have no idea whether we're winning or losing the other side of the map because the tank's signal range is just so bad. And I'm isolated. I can only see tanks within my own signal range and information that they're seeing or things they are seeing. So yeah, signal range. Um, it's all explained on the Watt Wiki. It's all explained under uh, skills. So uh, I might post the links down below. Here's the Watt Wiki. It goes into a little bit more detail as to what the skills are. You can see that, do we have, Thought I thought we had, there we go, signal boosting. We've got signal boosting here. We've got relaying here. It goes into a little bit more detail regarding the actual signal skills. But as I say, they're probably the least important skills you could put on a radio operator. Usually the first skill, if it's a light tank, your first skill is going to be the common 
skill camo. Uh, if it's heavy, possibly your first skill is going to be repairs. Um, but um, other than that, your first skill is usually going to be situational awareness because that increases your view range and view range is incredibly important. And even if your own signal range is terrible, as long as your teammates have good signal range, then it's not really going to affect you too much. If your signal range is terrible and you're playing lower tier tanks, then you might want to look into boosting some of these skills. But um, situational awareness and common skills are usually more common to put on a radio operator. And if your radio operator happens to be your commander, then usually these are the last skills you're going to put on. You're going to get six Sense, you're going to get Brothers in Arms, maybe Master or uh, whatever the other commander skill is. Um, oh, I've forgotten. Is it... Uh, Jack of all trades, that's it. You might put that on, on a commander. Um, there are lots and lots of different things, but uh, just remember the difference between skills and perks. Uh, and there are a lot better, better skills and perks to put on a radio operator than things to boost your signal range. Uh, all of this information is available by the Wiki Wargaming Net skill, our page. Uh, this is skills. Um, this is view range, camo, radio range. It goes into a lot more detail here. So um, you can get all of this information via WhatWiki. I'll post the links below if you want to go into it in a little bit more detail. But that's basically how signal range works. And as I say, a lot of people think that basically it's a daisy chain. So it's basically your signal range, means you can contact an, a friendly tank. Everything the friendly tank sees is related to you. Everything you see is related to the friendly tank. Now, if there's another friendly tank and he's within signal range of the tank you're talking to, then you can also see what he's seeing. That's not the case. No, no, it's only one-on-one. -on -one. Whatever you happen to be in contact with shares information. Whatever they happen to be in contact with, they share information, but you can't see tanks on the other side of the map unless you have to be in signal or uh, signal range with them regardless of your view range so uh, there we go that is signal range i'm getting tired i've been talking non-stop for an hour i'm gonna leave it there because it's a very very basic basic battle mechanic but it's surprising it's surprising how confusing it can be but anyway thank you guys for watching this is part of the 5k subscriber special week um if you want to win a steam key please leave a comment below uh thank you for watching i'll see you next time